if you would like to set up a Minecraft server for yourself so that you and your friends can play together, but something like Minehut is just not cutting it because it's not strong enough or you don't have the control over it that you want, uh, but you also don't want to run it on your own machine. Well, there is another solution that is Oracle Cloud in there you can set up your minecraft server now it is a little bit more complicated than just going on something like minehut and activate your server but in this tutorial here i am going to walk you through step by step thank you very much for stopping by here with yanni place on another tech quickie even though like i said this video here is not going to be as quick as always, all the links are down in the description and the first place that we are going to is to Oracle itself and we are going to click on that start for free. Now that Oracle Cloud Server is always free, but of course you have to set up your account first. Now, if you go through this sign up form, then you are going to get to this page here where you're going to have to put in your address you also need to enter a phone number and a payment verification, but it is a free service. I'm going to show you why it is a free service and how you can keep it a free service and they're never going to charge you. But the reason why you have to put in all of that information is they a don't want that you just create uh, hundreds thousands of different servers all for free. So they give you one free server and that's it and uh, that's why they need all this information and the easiest way to verify somebody nowadays is with uh, credit card information as you can see here you won't be charged unless you elect to upgrade and again if you do it with a credit card then you can always reverse the charge so it is secure i can guarantee you that and once everything is done we are having to wait everything is being set up so now oracle cloud is set up for us and now we have to say what are we going to put on this server and how we give a server do we want and for that the first thing that we have to do is we have to create a virtual machine and as you can see here always free eligible and then while we're in here, you can give everything a name. I just call it AMC server. And then down here in create the compartment, you can just leave it on a root. I blurred that out because it is showing my name. Placement, we don't have to worry about. Uh, leave it on whatever is standard selected. As long as it says always free eligible on the side of it, we don't have to go in there. Uh, image and shape, we go in there and we are going to select what operating system we want running on there. In the image, you can pretty much run whatever you want, whatever you are comfortable with. Uh, I am just going with the uh, Oracle Linux. And then in the shape, we are going to select the Ampere. And then down here on the slider, you can select how many uh, CPU cores you want and how much memory you would like assigned. I'm just going with 32 and 6. And here again, if you pull it up too much, eventually it gives you the service limit status saying, hey, that is not free anymore. In networking, usually you can leave everything on standard. So we create a new virtual cloud network. We create a new public subnet and then we're making sure that IPv4 is going to be assigned. And next we're getting to the SSH keys and we just want to have a new SSH key generated for us. And we are going to download the private key and also go ahead and save the public key. SSH keys are being used so that you can remote into your server or you can also give the uh, public keys to somebody and then they can remote in. So we save our key. We save the public key. I am just going to put them into a folder where I know where I have them stored. Last section is the boot volume. We can leave that all unticked and then we click on create. <laughs> On our next screen, we're going to see a big orange square here, and it's going to take a few minutes for everything to provision. And that will be the place where we would have the 
sponsored segment, but of course I don't have a sponsor. You are actually my sponsor, so if you go down here to the bottom and you click the subscribe button, that really helps me out a lot. And as you can see, a couple minutes later, we are running. Our virtual machine is set up, and now we can start installing things. So now we need to remote into our server. And that's what we are doing with SSH. And there are, if you're on Windows 10, you now have the option to actually do that through the command line. Or we can download PuTTY. And we are just going to do that in this tutorial here. And we are just going with the 64 bit load the installer, go through the wizard. Once everything is installed, we are opening up two different things. We are going to open up Putty Gen and we're going to open up Putty. Go ahead and get Putty Gen first. And now in here, we are going to load an existing private key file. We click on load and then we're going to find the private key that we just downloaded. Now, if you are in the folder and you cannot see it, you can click on all files. Now here you can see we have that SSH key and we have the public key, but we need the private one. So click on it, click on open. And then we're going to get this warning here telling us that we have to save it as a private key. Of course, we are going to do that. Now, if you want, you can put a password in here to protect this key. I'm just going to skip that this time. Save it as a private key and on yes. And I just call it my demo key private. And next we're going to start up PuTTY. And now in here, we are going under connection, SSH, authentication and now we are going to connect that key that we just saved with the generation in here click on browse we go back to the folder that we were and in here now you can see that putty demo key select that click on open then we navigate all the way back to session and in here we are now putting in our ip address and the IP address you can find back on our console. It's in here. You just click on copy. We copy that in here. Or we leave on 22 and then we click on open. Once everything is open, now we can go ahead and log in. And to log in, we use our username. And username you can find here. Log in with OPC. We click on enter and because we put that key in we are now locked in so you can see we're now in as opc in our mc server and now we have to type in a few commands and all of the commands i am going to put down into the description so that you can just copy them and if you want to paste something in here you just Right click. So the first command that we put in is this one here. So we want to have a list of all the available Java versions. And in here, we are going to pick the highest version. I'm going to install a Java 1.18.1 server. So that means I want to go with this uh, JDK 17. So now that we have those packages here, um, we have to type in another command and I thought you actually can select it and right click and it copies it down, but it does not. So I just have to type it in. But if you are installing the version 17 as well, I'm going to have the full command down in the description. And now as you can see, it uh, tells us the information that it found this package. And now it asking us, is okay to install that? Confirm with a yes. It's downloading everything and in installing. Perfect. If you get this information here that the JDK 17 is installed and the first step is already completed, 
that means that we have a job on it and we can get on to install the minecraft server and for that we are going on to the next link and here you can see that is the char file that we need right click on it and then we copy the link address onto our clipboard and then we're going back to putty and we're running following command wget space and then right click to put our uh, web page in and when we click on enter it is going to install the server char now back on the minecraft page you can see this command here that is the command that you need to start up your server now i just realized that in the file that uh, mojang has on here this actually did not work for me uh it just put in server.jar because uh the char file is not called minecraft underscore server 1.18 so if you have the same issue just run it with server.jar and then it is going to start up your server but you are going to get this error here the failed to load to the eula text uh if you remember when you start up minecraft the first time you always have to accept the end user licensing agreement and of course we have to do the same but there is not going to be a fancy pop-up so we have to go into the eula to change that to yes that we read it for that we are typing in this nano eula.txt command and now we are in here we're just going down here and we overwrite the false to true and then to get out here we are hitting Control x and then we confirm with y for yes to get out and now we can try running that server again and as you can see the server is now starting up preparing on area and everything but that is not the end of the video yet because we still have to make sure that people are actually able to connect to this server that we're gonna have to change a few things in the firewall and make sure that all the network settings are correct so back on our virtual machine, we now have to go and configure a few things in our subnet that is down here. We click on it. So we are going to click on this name here that is created for us. Then we add a new ingress rule. And then we are creating a 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 forward slash 0. Go ahead and put that on your clipboard and we are going with a tcp ip protocol and then the port range we are going with 25565 then we are going to add another ingress rule here at the bottom right and we are going to put in the same stuff that we have on the top and this time we are going with the UDP. Then we click on add ingress rules. So well, let's go back on to putty or back into our server. And the first thing that we're going to do is we have to stop our server forward slash stop. And now we should be back at OPC at MC server. And then we're going to put in two commands to open up the ports. The first one is this one here at the end we have the tcp so this one now is open and then the second one instead of tcp at the end we just have the udp also this one here is successful and now we are just going to reload our firewall perfect so also here that was successful and now that the firewall and everything is set up we can run our start command again and then also here that xms uh, 1024m that just means that it runs with one gigabyte and of course you can allocate more so you can go with 8 10 12 uh, kind of depends on what you selected earlier and as you can see we are now started up 
Well, let's go ahead and start up Minecraft to see if we can connect to this server. So, as you can see, I got Minecraft started up and I did run a quick little test because I wasn't sure if I can sign in with 1.18 even though the server is on 1.18.1. But if you go into multiplayer and you click on add a server, all you have to do is you add the IP address in here. And I already did that. And down here you can see the Minecraft server. So let's go ahead and connect to the server. And you probably already spotted over here that I joined the game. So now I am in my very own Minecraft server that is going to run much better than something like Minehut, even though it takes a little bit longer to set it up. Now, of course, there is still a lot of things that we would have to do. We would have to OP ourselves and whitelist and set up different game rules and things like that. Now, if you would like to get a video around that, I gladly make one. As long as this video here is getting enough traction. But so long. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope that you already hit the subscribe button and I see you at another video. Goodbye.